All right, so now that we're done with shape 11, or shape 10, I'm sorry, we're going to go ahead and work on shape 11. Now, shape 11 is a good one to do because if you can do shape 11, you can pretty much do these other shapes. Shape 14 is its own beast. Don't worry about it. If you can do it, you're pretty much guaranteed 100 on the test next week. Um, but I want you to be able to do shape 11 so you can do shape 12, 13, and 15. If you can do shape 11, then those ones will be pretty easy. Now, starting with shape 11... If we look at it, it's kind of a weird measurement. So I go to my new document, we look at shape 11 here. It's kind of weird. It tells me this line's length, but it doesn't tell me how long this line is. Okay, so we have to kind of figure it out by looking at our circles. So we'll go to the orange eye, we go to, or not orange eye, we go to our sketch. We start on the front face, because I'm going to draw this front face first. And I'm going to start at this corner, because I can see how long this line is. It's clearly 1.25. 1.25 okay and then from there I can tell that it goes down 0.5 and then from here I can tell that this line goes over here horizontally but it doesn't tell me the length and if I look at it I can change how long it is because I haven't closed off the shape yet because I haven't given a dimension yet I don't know how long it is but what we do know is how long this line is. If we look at it, I hit dimension. How long is it? Well, the whole thing from bottom to the center mark, which is where this ends, is the center mark, is 1. This height down here is 0.5. Well, then it's going to be just 1 minus 0.5 or 0.5. All right. Now let's figure out how long this is. Well, I know it's 1.25 here, but I don't know how long this is. But I didn't know the radius of this big outer circle. Radius is just edge to center. So this edge to center is 0.5. This edge right here to center is 0.5. This edge to here to center is 0.5. So from here is 1.25, then to the center is another 0.5, and then from the center to the edge is another 0.5. Well, that's easy. It's 1.25 plus 0.5 plus 0.5. And we get is 2.25. Too easy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my line tool. I'm going to drag it up. And I'm going to tell it to be... I hit dimension. I'm going to tell it to be 1 inch. Now from here I have two options. I can draw a circle... Or I can use an arc. I could draw an arc, click here to here, drag it up until it have a radius of 0.5. And if you notice that's screwed up, okay, well, you don't have to use the arc anyway. But you could, again, you could just draw here to here, drag it up, type in 0.5, hit enter. And for some reason, it's giving me a weird radius. Oh, because I haven't li lined up this arc technically with these lines. Got it. So I'm going to hit Control z and you can use your arc tool, but I prefer to use my circle tool. I'm going to tell my circle to line up with these two dots here, and I'm going to drag it out. And I'm going to tell it to be tangent. If you look at what tangent is, you can look at the animation and watch it happen. What it does is it takes a circle or a round object, a round arc in some way, and it lines up with the line. It doesn't mix it where it doesn't go through. If you notice in the picture, it doesn't go through it, it just lines up with the side of it, like it's a wheel rolling on the ground. So I click my tangent tool, I click on my circle and my line, and my circle and my line. And if I look at, the, look at it now, it should have a dimension of one inch. Well, yeah, that makes sense, because I just told it to be stuck in the middle. The problem is, it's stuck on those two lines, but I can still move it up and down. Which is why it's still green. I need to lock it on to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this out of my way for a second. I'll move it back down in a second. I'm going to connect these with a line. Now I'm going to tell this dot here to be coincident with my line. And now it's blue. 
And I'm going to get rid of this stuff on the bottom. I don't need it. I don't need this trim. And I definitely don't need this line. But it's not letting me trim it. That's okay. Sometimes it doesn't let you trim. No big deal. We can get around that. But the point is, I don't need those two. I have the shape now. I finished my sketch. And I hit extrude. I want to click on all of my shapes. And there it goes. Now, how far does it come out? Well, again, we go to this circle. It extrudes, if you look, this has a radius of 0.5. That means from this center to here is 0.5. This center to this edge is 0.5. So it extrudes 0.5 plus 0.5. Or the radius plus the radius. And we're almost done. Next thing I can do is I can click on New Sketch here. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can read top because it makes my life easier. I'm going to turn on Shade with Edges because it makes my life easier. And I'm going to draw a circle. I want this circle to be centered exactly in the middle. So I'm going to hit the green dot in the middle. I'm going to drag it up. And then I'm going to make it be a green dot on the end. So it has that radius of 0.5. I'm going to finish my sketch. And I'm going to extrude. I don't want to make it cut. I want to go the opposite direction. But I want it to join when I go the opposite direction. And I'm going to tell it to be 0.5 tall. Next, I'm going to add this circle right here. I'm going to click on circle. I'm going to draw it right here. It tells me that this circle has a diameter of 0.5. Then, if you look at the center mark of both circles, they have the same center. Well, that's our concentric constraint. Think like coworker, but with centers of your circle. Centric, co concentric. You click on two arcs, it'll make them have the exact same center. So now I can't move this shape. Cool. Now it's stuck in the middle. I finished my sketch. I'm going to go ahead and extrude, cut, distance. Hit OK. And I'm almost done with this shape. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this random shape right here. I go orange eye, new sketch. Go to my top view, turn it sideways. And it seems clear to me that there are two arcs here and here and lines separating them. So I'm going to draw two circles here and here. And they both have a diameter of 0.5. Here, I'll prove it. From end to end is 0.5. So I'm going to tell them to be the same size first off. And then I'm going to add a dimension to one of them to be 0.5. If I can find it, for some reason my circle moved into here. There it goes. And it seems clear to me that this inner circle is concentric with this outer circle. So I'm going to add a concentric constraint again. Right here. Click here and here. To those two to be centered. And then I'm going to connect these two circles with a line. From end to end. And this circle is also going to connect. And you can connect in the middle or not. It doesn't matter. I'm then going to tell these two circles to be horizontal. And I'm also going to tell them to be tangent to my circles. And if it's already tangent, it won't let you connect it. Like this, it's going to say that constraint already exists. Sometimes it accidentally happens while you're building. No big deal. Check this one. All right, so it's all constrained. The only problem is now I've got it completely horizontal. I've got it all aligned. I haven't told it how far away it needs to be. Well, if I look, the two centers are 0.75 away. Too easy. Click on these two circles, drag it up, 0.75. Then all I have to do is finish my sketch, extrude, cut all the way through, and hit OK. And I'm done. Oops. I'm done with shape 11.